Okay, now let me do a quick teardown of the Geneva Sound Model S. Here you have this nice shiny box and when you turn it behind you can see you have the power input. It's a switching, power, a switching mode power supply rated for 20 watts, 100-240 volt. And here you have the FM antenna and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack input. Okay, so remove the four pads and I already removed some of the screws earlier for my own curiosity. So now you can see the power supply is here and I unscrew it with this security bit which is in the form of a hex screw driver. And you can see this is quite secure you know, with a caution that says risk of electrical shock. Do not open. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this at home. So here you can remove the aluminum cover that's covering the power supply. The interesting thing is that Geneva Sound decided to you can just lift this, this power supply. And uh, like I was saying, the interesting thing is that the Geneva Sound decided to make a modular design for the power supply, probably to make it easy to repair and replace. They can just send the user a new power supply like this or without having to open the whole unit. So you can see here there is the positive and negative connector from the PCB inside. And being a switch mode, uh, switch mode power supply, it uses a lot of electrolytic capacitors and with time some of these capacitors will dry out or s swell up and eventually fail. And so the lifespan of uh, switching uh, power supply is limited to 5 to 10 years. And I think the modular design is commendable because it makes repair a lot easier, even though it's not really user serviceable, since the speaker, um, sorry, the power supply is uh, kind of like melted onto the cover, and you can't really open it without breaking it. So it's not really user serviceable, but you can always order a replacement part from Geneva Sound as long as they stay in business. Okay, so here is the other connector that connects to the power supply on this side. Uh, one interesting thing I noticed is that it doesn't seem to be very cut precisely. So you can see this, it's kind of, uh, it seems like it's been cut by, by hand. It's not very precise. I would expect something that's more um, machine precision because all the other parts on this uh, aluminum plate here are, I mean, at least they seem to be uh, machine cut. So let me uh, just remove the other screws to show you what's inside it in this class D amplified speaker system. And when I say class D, it means class digital. It uses some kind of uh, digital signal processor to amplify the sound. And for you see this so you have I have removed all these screws here so now I just have to lift up this plate and you will be able to see what's inside so have a look so here you can see the PCB with all the control modules that control both the sound and the iPod like uh, manual control on top and you can see these are the big capacitors for sound and they've got a couple other ones here for various purposes and this most likely links this is a connector that links to the top to control the on off and the other um, buttons used for the operation and here you have some synthetic it seems like synthetic um, they call this cotton inside and you have the port for the base here the base port on this side you can see that yes so this is the base port and this is a synthetic cotton and I'm not going to remove them 
But anyway, that's pretty much what you get for this speaker system. And to put it back, just push the aluminum plate back. So from a service point of view, it's quite easy to service. If something fails, you know, you can just replace it, especially the power supply. It's a module. And, um, but I have to say, it, it looks good. It's a very nice and clean design that, that probably appeals to people, many people who have Apple product. But from a sound quality perspective, it's okay. It, it's not the best sound that I heard for this price range between 250 to 350 and if you're looking for a all-in-one system at you know a price range that's 250 250 to 350 you could do just you know keep in mind of some of the limitations including the distortion when played at high volume from the computer source so you know, the co components, they don't cost that much. And the Geneva sound is a little bit like the hamburger I had in Geneva airport, $17 for a Burger King burger meal. It's, you know, you can get better value elsewhere, but if you're set to have the design, you know, the all-in-one system, hey, you know, go for it. But at least you know what you're getting into now.